Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the 107 CD Fisher Descal Complete Deutsche Grammophone Leader Box. <sighs> it makes you winded just saying it, doesn't it? There's lots of stuff in here. Oh boy, is there lots of stuff in here. Now, you may recall, I showed you the prior Fisher D. Scow leader box, about 20 CDs worth. But this, this is the big kahuna, isn't it? Look at all the stuff to mark the 10th anniversary of the great baritone's death. His entire Deutsche Grammophon Phillips and Decca song recordings are collected here for the first time. That means you get like Das Lied von der Erde. Actually, you get two Das Lied von der Erdes. You get the deck. I wonder if they licensed the EMI one. Um, let's see. Let me just take a look here. The Sleep Finder Air to disc 26. Well, you know, it's kind of fun to see. Uh, I actually look through all this stuff again. But the problem with these boxes, of course, is that if you've been collecting things over the centuries, then you have most of this stuff already, right? I mean, we know that. But you do get, like, lots of things here. Here's the Sleep Finder Air to with... Oh, this is the Joseph Cripps one, that live thing. That's really lousy, actually. All right, so there's that. I didn't remember which one it was. His best one, of course, is the Kletsky with Murray Dickey on EMI. See, Fisher G. Scow's early recordings were for EMI, and they were wonderful, and he was in his freshest voice then, and some of them are just amazing. I mean, the Mahler with Fort Fengler and you know, all kinds of other stuff, and Kempa, that Kindertone leader with Kempa. Oh, baby, and his first versions of the great Schubert song cycles, all of that stuff was on EMI. So, you know, none of that's in, in, in this contraption. But there have been so many smaller boxes released since, uh, you know, before this, this, this mega thing came out. Really, I mean, lots of them. I mean, here's one. I have them all. I mean, the Brahms. There was, he did it by composer. There was a Brahms box. There was like a list box. There was a, there was a box. There was this box. Of, of Schubert, 21 CDs of Schubert, but this is only the Gerald Moore recordings, whereas he did quite a few with Jörg Demos and other people as well of the same things, of course. And those are in here. Isn't that exciting? Now, it's kind of ironic, I think, that I'm spending a lot of time talking about leader collections. I mean, we've had the Ellie Ameling box, and there was that first Fisher Scout box, and then there's this Fisher Scout box, and then there's all these leader things. And I'm not even a leader person. It just goes to show um, that, first of all, I try to do things out of professional obligation. And second of all, even though I'm not a leader person, I appreciate great leader singing. I mean, who doesn't, right? And I like the music. I just don't gravitate towards it naturally. So anyway, if we open this sucker here, oh, we get a very nice book with no texts and translations. Uh -huh. And then you take out the, 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 this thing, which will probably disintegrate and become a horrifying sticky mess. And we see that once again, they are using the lovely, attractive swastika arrangement that Deutsche Grammophon has adopted for all of these larger boxes. I think that's just so charming, don't you? And so we've got that. And we're just going to go through this rather quickly because, like I said, there are boxes of all this stuff. I'm just going to tell you what's in it. You either like Fish Disc or you don't. I, I think he's a marvelous singer. I really do. There are issues with his, you know, delivery sometimes. Sometimes he barks, you know, like, like um, again, in like the Bernstein, Das Lied von der Erde, you know, where, where the horses come through and he's yelling, Das Ross, this is the biting food of hyping, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want him to just sing the notes simply? I actually prefer Hermann Pry, personally, between you and me, you know, because I just think he had a more beautiful voice. You know, Fisher Giscal may have had more alt I don't, I don't know. So let's, let me just tell you what's in it, and we'll be done with it. Okay, disc one is CPE Bach. That's really interesting. See, the important thing about this is that it shows the amazing range of repertoire that he had, which really was astonishing. I mean, he really, he really encompassed the art of German leader like no other artist had. And he gets full credit for that, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, really. And there's nothing not to like. If you like him, then you'll enjoy this. Uh, you know, all 107, no, it's 101 CDs? Yeah, 107. 
Yes, there's a life retold in 1961, and then two discs of interviews, because so it's three discs that we don't need to worry about, because like all artists, the favorite topic of conversation was himself, of course. Okay, CPE Bach, then we've got Beethoven, is discs two through five. You get, of course, an die ferne geliebte, to a distant beloved, and folk song arrangements, two discs worth. Then we've got the Brahms stuff, which I think is some of the best stuff he ever did. You know, that's discs six through 17. So that's 11 discs or so. You know, Brahms was first and foremost a song composer. And his songs are very, very beautiful. And they're quite different from people, aside from the four serious songs and the other stuff. But I mean, you know, the, the basic smaller song series, the sets, you know, including the one that has the lullaby and all that stuff, they're really, really attractive songs. I mean, Brahms knew how to write a good song and people don't give them the attention they deserve because they're all too busy listening to things like the second piano concerto or the German Requiem or God knows what. But he understood the voice. He was a wonderful writer for the voice and they're beautiful. So if you don't know the Brahms songs, I really would suggest you give them a shot. Then we've got, let's see, oh, what do we have here? Oh, we, we include, this includes duets and quartets, which are lovely. And the Liebeslieder waltzes, which I sang when I was in high school. Uh, they are fun. And we have Dvorak's uh, Biblical Leader. It's a pity we don't have more. Then we've got several discs of Liszt, Liszt discs 18 through 21, and two discs of Leve, who's fun. And then we've got the Mahler stuff, which is, you know, discs 24 through 26, the Rickert Leader, the Kindertoten Leader, and Das Lied von der Erde. Uh, we have Nietzsche, Nietzsche the songwriter. And he wrote wonderful little songs like, you know, the coming of the Superman and God is dead and and you know they have wonderful titles like that you know just kidding now then we've got one disc of Rager Fitzner thank God he only gave us one disc actually before you all jump down my throat Fitzner wrote some beautiful songs he really did some of them are lovely his orchestral songs are, are, are delicious they really are I'm very surprised um, you can get some of them on CPO they're beautiful uh, and then we have Atmar Schuch and Gottfried von Einem. Um, that's interesting. And then Schubert. Schubert is, is 31 CDs, because you only get 21 here. Oh, cat's jumping around. 31, uh, 21 here. These are only the Gerald Moore ones, but if you use the ones with everybody else, and he did it with everybody else, and not just for DG, as I said. So there's another 31 of those, including... You know, Die Schöne Müller and Winterreise, Schwanengesang, Goethe Lieder, and also duets, trios, and quartets. The vocal ensemble pieces that he did that people only pay attention to because he was one of the members of the vocal ensemble, that was a labor of love because they are lovely works, wonderful works. Um, Schumann is discs 63 through 74. I mean, you also get Schumann's duets. Shostakovich, not a lot there, but yes, Symphony Number no. 14 and those other other song cycle things that he did. That's kind of fun. I do not like his 14th symphony. I don't think he had the voice for it. Um, it's in that Haitink recording in the original languages, which I just think is bad. It should be done in Russian. It should always be done in Russian. There you go. Then we've got Britain, the Blake songs and Proverbs. Um, and let's see, Strauss, Richard Strauss, his discs, discs 77 through 80. See how quickly we can go through this? Because like I said, we don't need to obsess over the performances particularly. I mean, they're mostly well known. Tchaikovsky, disc 81. Well, that's a novelty, at least for him. And then Hugo Wolf, discs 82 through 93. You get all the good stuff. The Murica leader, the Goethe leader, the Eichendorf leader, the Italian leader book, and the Spanish leader book. Uh, let's see, Zemlinsky's Lyrische Symphony. That's the recording with Lauren Mazel. Um, melodramas, discs 95 and 96. Oh, that's talking with music in the background. If you want to, like, kill yourself, listen to those. Uh, Schoenberg, Webern and Berg, disc 97, Christmas songs. Oh, how nice. Disc 98, DBC, Ravel, and Ives. His Ives disc was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And, you know, because he did those songs, I mean, that turned a lot of people onto Ives songs. And I've songs are fabulous. There's like a five disc set of them on Naxos, which a lot of you are yelling at me that it should be oh six discs, that it should be one of like, you know, the most important recording projects ever, which I actually don't think it is. But it's a very, very, very fine set. And I have it sitting right here. Where is it? Right here. That's it's Honiger. At least H is next to I down there. There they are. 
just just to let you know that I have them here. Um, but he only did some select ones, and he didn't do Charlie Rutledge. He should have. But they're great. The Swimmers from the Swimmers is marvelous. Uh, let's see. Then we've got more DBC, Rudy Stefan and Ludislavsky. And then Haydn, Beethoven, and Weber folk song settings. And then Henza, Fortner, and Frank Martin. Remember, he did the, the Yadermann monologues and other things. Then songs by artist composers. I don't know what an artist composer is. I don't know. But they're Mahler, Reznicek, Busoni, Kempf, Bush, Walter, and Minardi. That's who they are. Then disc 104 is Meyerbeer. And then we've got early Goethe settings, two discs worth of them, by Reichart, Zelter, Seckendorf, Niefe, uh, Beethoven, Kreutzer, Hummel, Arnim, Wagner, and Anna Amalia von Preussen. Anna Amalia was quite something, by the way. And then we have his interviews. And that's it. That's the box. We've covered the box. Wasn't that easy? That was really quite simple. Um, what is not so simple is actually listening to the whole sucker. Um, but there it is. He really was a force of nature, um, a tremendous artist. His legacy is non pari I have no objection or issue with it at, at all, whatsoever. You, like I said, if you like him or you don't. And if you like him, you're going to like all this stuff in there. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's so much stuff, but it really is, you know, unlike so many of these complete editions that are just full of all the same old, same old, it really is an encyclopedic edition, a reference edition that you can put away somewhere and take it down and whenever you want and dip into it at will when you want to hear, you know, some of the more unusual selections. That's what's fun for me. I mean, not the umpteenth Schubert thing, you know, another Vinterizer or something. I actually prefer th those songs sung by tenor anyway, the song cycles. So, uh, you know, but no complaints, no complaints at all. It's, it's, it's a admirable of DG to put it all together and I hope they sell a million. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, keep on listening friends and take care.